my interest in technology started uh, when I was quite young. Uh, I had an uncle of mine that had a computer. And I was very interested in how things worked. How do you write stuff in the computer and then stuff happens in the background? So I wanted to understand a little bit, a little bit more about it. So I started actually programming in, in my spectrum, trying to do some graph stuff. And I think I was started in deeply in technology when I was uh, 14. I think it was when I went to school and started studying it. Um, and I've been there ever since. Growing up, I was very much into um, science fiction. So one of my favorite authors, uh, I think around when I was eight or nine years old, was Isaac Asimov. And so it started from that age and then it progressed um, from the iRobot series to <laughs> shows like Star Trek The Next Generation. So that was yeah, a passion from early on, largely with um, just different forms of media. It was at the time when I did not get selected for the Air Force uh, role which I wanted. I said, okay, let me look around what's next. And that's when I figured out a course which I applied for. It was Masters in Computer Applications. And that's when my tech journey started. I started in computers way early. Uh, that was what I, my life was pretty much sketched to do what I wanted. And that was the only option. I did not have a plan B. Uh, and I thought this is the only thing that will uh, get me going where my passion was. So. To me, it was all about computers and software programming from my early age. My son, uh, who is a teen, he often asks me, Dad, like, what do you do for work? Do you actually do any work? Uh, and I tell them in a, in a simple way, which is, uh, we're all you know, at some part of our life, we're, we all build these Lego blocks. And when you start building a house, you start with the foundation. And what I would tell him is that we are actually building the foundational block for that house that Maersk is building on. I was explaining it to my parents once, like what we do. And um, it's, it's like building the uh, underground of a city, which means you have to do all the plumbing, you have to do all the wiring, but nobody gets to see it. They realize only when it's not working. And that's where the fun starts. Our purpose is to build the technology backbone for Maersk by enabling a seamless user experience. And if you look at what we do today, it's everything from database engineering to enterprise architecture, to cloud, to data center, to network engineering, to also end user support where our team manages our global workforce. We have four uh, strategic locations for our team, uh, Maidenhead in UK, Copenhagen in Denmark, Pune and Bangalore in India. We basically make sure that everything runs, runs in, uh, with high availability, high resilience, and we want to provide a good experience for our users, our developers, our engineers. We, we want to provide a, a, a development experience for them and to make sure that everything they, they, they write, all the applications or the products run in a resilient and high availability way. I mean, we have the privilege of being able to work on quite a lot of the, the newer technologies. So from the way in which we're looking really critically at the different ways in which we can apply more advanced technologies like AI and machine learning to help not just get to table stakes, but really take a leap beyond to do things that are fundamentally not being done, certainly not in our industry, but um, you know, at the bleeding edge of what other you know, companies that actually might even be digital natives are, are looking at. So when we talk about tools and platforms, I would say you name it and we have it. Uh, the, the reason is because we have a legacy of, of multiple decades. We have a strong open source presence for our modernized infrastructure, but along with that, we also have languages like Go, Java, Python, .NET, which is supporting our, our larger journey. There's a lot of emphasis on culture of learning. As an example, uh, we just rolled out an AI course to my entire organization. The speed at which we are learning and embracing and experimenting is it's, it's a phenomenal rate. And we are already starting to see some of these projects come to life uh, as we speak. We're really thinking really creatively about different ways we can leverage, um, leverage AI and ML. There's quite a lot to, to play with and there, we are really encourage that, that room to innovate, which for me is incredibly important. My team takes care of cost transparency. We make sure that we have visibility to all costs across tech. And that is, of course, kind of connecting technology to finance, which is a very challenging thing, but we love it because it brings a lot of challenges. What gets encouraged is innovation. If you have an idea, uh, you can always brainstorm it together and then add to the rich uh, legacy which we are creating. I think what uh, makes TSE stand out, it's our people. Uh, we have some amazing uh, group of people who are spread out globally, different cultures, different ethnicity, who bring in diverse thoughts and approaches to, to problem solving. And that is the part that excites me every day morning when I come into work. 